If you want to write a book and become a best-selling author, you're in the right place. At Elite Online Publishing, we can help you create, publish, and market your book so that it becomes a number one bestseller. We work with a limited number of authors to ensure that they receive the best possible service. So if you want to learn how to write and publish a book that will empower you to smartly grow your brand, business, and credibility, apply today. We look forward to working with you. Hi, it's Melanie Johnson. Thanks for coming and listening. We have a special guest today. Derek Depp Kerr is joining us. If you're curious about the trend of audiobooks, how to really monetize audiobooks, what you should do, you're in the right place. We are going to dive deep into audiobooks today. There's a lot of potential, especially in the future of audiobooks. So Derek is going to cue us in on all of that. Hey, Derek, thanks for coming. Hey, Melanie, glad to be here. So tell us, how did you get started in the audiobook niche? Yeah, so I had been publishing books, uh, got my start in 2012, and first books didn't sell too well, but eventually had a breakthrough success with my third book, became a number one bestseller in weight loss. And so ever since then, I was like, okay, I love this whole book publishing thing, started publishing more books. And then about 2015, I started noticing a trend. And if you're listening to this, maybe you've had this experience. If you tell people you're an author, they go, oh, cool. Can I find your books on Audible? And I'd be like, no, you can get it Kindle, print book, you know, and they're like, oh, well, I just listen to audiobooks. <laughs> and like, that just kind of kept repeating itself. And so I just go, yeah, you know, there's audiobooks. That seems to be a thing now. Of course, it's always been around, but growing in popularity. And so I just looked into turning my books in audiobooks. And the challenge is, if you look into it, it is you know, it can be in the thousands of dollars to turn a book into an audiobook, even if you shop around and have a shorter book we're talking, you know, $500, $700 plus for a short book. And then again, up into the thousands of dollars. And, you know, I mean, I could do that. So I go, well, let me just try it with one book though, because I want to see if I'm going to get a, get an ROI on it. So I did hire a narrator and it was cool, you know, got the book out there, but then I really wanted to figure out how to do it myself. So I explored that whole process and my background, I got a degree in music. So a lot of trial and error, but I have my audio editing background and I figured out that you actually can do your own audiobooks. And we could talk about when you might want to do that versus hire a narrator. And that opened up the door. Where I go, well, now I can do this from my own home. It's convenient. And so I ended up recording just about all my books in audiobook format, started doing it for some other authors. And the big thing is I saw the sales come in. I don't do a lot of audiobook specific promotion, but it's over 15,000 additional sales that have come in really just from having the audiobook edition available, not even necessarily promoting it that hard, but you know, people go onto Amazon, they see your book on Kindle or print edition or audio, or if you even sell it direct to consumer and they can choose the audiobook edition, there's a lot of people who will only get your book in audiobook format. So I saw the results for myself and my students. And I said, this is a no brainer for many authors to at least have an audiobook edition available. I mean, is that typical ROI 15,000 sales? Would you say that's typical or not typical? I don't ever like to say typical. I mean, there's some people who do a lot more than that, especially if you go into certain marketplaces. I write nonfiction. And so some fiction authors do significantly more than that just because of the volume of sales. But that said, like even then, I don't think too much as a nonfiction author about the the sales as much as like, if these are people who are now part of my audience and part of my tribe, and they want to get into coaching programs or courses or things like that, I'm really thinking another benefit here is reaching that audience where typically audiobook consumers tend to be higher income for my world is people who go to like seminars, they're the busy entrepreneur types, right? So especially if you're reaching that audience, volume of sales is cool, but also just the reaching people you might not otherwise reach. That's another important aspect of having an audiobook. Well, I really like that because, you know, we teach our clients, it's not all about book sales. It's really on the back end of getting those clients, expanding your list. So like you say, why do you put your book in multiple stores and have it in worldwide distribution? Same thing. Some people are only consumers of audiobooks and won't do any other thing besides that. And that's a big point too, is they, not only will they only buy the book if it's an audio like their brains are just like i only listen to audio right and so yeah. then okay you reach them but also the likelihood that they're going to consume it and this is key this is a distinction i only really got in the last maybe two years of noticing this which is like i've gotten books and i've purchased books print or ebook i can't tell you how many 
Kindle books I purchased that are sitting on my Kindle. I've never checked them out. I keep telling myself one of these days I'll get to it. Who knows if that'll ever happen. But an audiobook, when I get audiobooks, I go, I, I actually listen to it. Usually like the same week I get it because it's convenient. And so you think not only are you more likely to sell the book to certain consumers, but they will actually consume it, which is necessary for them to leave a review and then check out your other work and then, you know, hopefully buy whatever else you're offering. Yeah, you know, audiobooks, you can multitask. You can work out while you're doing it. You can be doing cleaning the kitchen. You can be cooking. You can do a variety of things, even listen to it on your Alexa. Is there something to everyone consider an audiobook or is it only specific types of authors or content? The vast majority of authors would benefit from an audiobook. The obvious exception would be if you have something that is like a graphic novel where it's mainly about the images. Then there's things like cookbooks, which tend to not be an audiobook format. Some children's books can be audiobook format, but again, if it's like a picture book primarily. So think anything that's visual. What might be more kind of in the gray area would be something like a, a technical manual where it's like you really need the images and charts and graphs and stuff like that. Now, for most authors, they're not going to fall in that category. If you have like an informational book or an advice book or a how-to book, and just think, could you read this to someone and they get the main content? Yes. Now, might there be some images in the book? Might there be a few graphical things in there that could, you know, maybe not be as easy to understand in audio format? Yes. And in which case you can offer people a bonus download that they can get or some sort of reference sheet or say, hey, go here to download the, you know, the images or the infographics or whatever it is. So if that's just a smaller component of the book, then I would still say it can work in audiobook format. You might just have some supplementary information, or you just have to explain it in a, you know, kind of narrate out what you want people to visualize in their mind because they can't see it in the actual book. So it work for even some textbooks. I think this would be applicable, not necessarily the ones that have the graphics in them, but I could see textbooks going more audio as well. What do you think about that? I would always just say it depends on it, but I mean, yeah, if you think, just imagine what the user experience is going to be like, you know, if you think of a textbook as being something that it doesn't matter whether you're sitting there reading it or whether someone was speaking it to you and you go, well, and get the information is the same, then great. And also I thought about this, another distinction I made in recent years, which is how we as humans for a lot of many years, most of the world was illiterate. And so we are used to consuming information, sitting around a campfire, someone telling stories or, you know, explaining things, you know, teachers explaining things. So we're used to consuming information auditorily, someone speaking to us. And so I think there's a big benefit just neurologically to being able to kind of sit back and absorb the information that way. Very true. All right. You talked about voice talent versus doing it yourself. Tell us benefits and of both. Yep. So each one has its place. I like to do it myself, but it's, I won't say that's a one size fits all recommendation. The benefit of voice talent is, you know, you're going to get professional quality work. They're trained to do this. If you have a book that you want, this is more for fiction authors who have something where they want like voice acting, but even for a nonfiction author, if you want if you're just like, well, I don't think I have the voice for it. We'll cover that in a moment. <laughs> but, you know, you're at least getting the professional talent in there. They're going to do all the editing, so on and so forth. So that's really the big benefit. Now, you still do need to listen back to it, or at least I'd highly recommend it, because they might mispronounce names or they might say something in a way that you don't really care for. And in which case, you would just mark on the manuscript, hey, chapter seven at four minutes and 22 seconds, you said this, I'd like it to be said like this. And usually the narrator will work with you on that. So it is going to be a little time investment to listen to the whole thing and proof listen to it and then coordinate back and forth with the narrator. The the challenging part about that for some people is, you know, just budgeting it in. I mean, again, we're talking maybe thousands of dollars. It could be in the high hundreds for what you're doing. You know, to me, it's all about ROI though. You know, if you go, well, I put in a thousand bucks and I get multiple thousands in return potentially, then, then great. But I also understand for someone, maybe if they're just starting out, you know, how they want to budget, that's something to factor in. Now the do it yourself approach not just so much the money aspect, but for me, the biggest reason why I choose this is the connection. So especially if you are the thought leader, the expert type of author, you really want to position and brand yourself. There's something incredibly powerful about your voice 
like resonating inside someone's head, that connection that you can make, and especially the connection you have with your own work, your own material, your own book. And that is the biggest reason why I wanted to do it myself. And so that's the perk and you do, it does take training. It's not something you just go and hit the record button and it's going to all work out. You need to know the proper equipment. Fortunately, you can usually get what you need for less than a hundred bucks or less than 150 bucks. We can get into that if you want, but you know, good quality dynamic microphone, like the ATR 2100 X Samsung Q2U. Those are both good mics and then make sure it's edited properly of which you can learn how to do that yourself or hire an editor. So it's going to be more affordable. It's just also going to take the right education to know what you're doing. And so those are some of the pros and cons of each approach. And what I love is when an author does it themselves, I always revert back to Gary V is that he adds more content. Like, I think they give you a limit of how many extra words that you can put in from audible versus the original manuscript, but it's, I always feel like I'm getting extra stuff versus buying the regular book. Do you support that? Well, yeah, you can, there can be extra content. One thing to consider is if you want a book to be whisper sync enabled, you do want to have the audiobook match as closely to the ebook or the print book. The other thing about it with extra content is yes, like ideally you will, as an author, be out there speaking. So the ability to create audio content is going to translate to a lot of other things. So you can have bonus audio content. You can have, hey, here's what I was thinking when I wrote this chapter of the book, like that kind of extra behind the scenes content that you can offer. So that makes a great bonus value add, whether that's part of the audiobook, whether that's a bonus package that you create, that they download, all kinds of ways of doing that. And this ties into something like if someone goes, well, I don't love the sound of my voice. Okay. Well, if anyone has that thought, it's called being human, right? It's like, it's just a natural thing until you get used to hearing the sound of your voice. What happens though, is we're used to hearing it one way, which is resonating through our skull. And so when you hear it on recording, it's not what you expect. And it's that mismatch, which is what throws some people off. But I found that it's just something that you can get used to. If you're really not sure about it, then you can record yourself reading some of your book or reading anything and play it for someone. Don't tell them it's you. Be like, what do you think about this narrator? And get some objective feedback. And coming back to this idea of extra content, one of the benefits, whether you do your own audiobook or not, I highly recommend, again, especially if you're the nonfiction thought leader expert type of author, is audio is big. And that means getting on as a guest on people's podcast. In some cases, maybe hosting your podcast, being a guest on a summit, all of these things where you are out there leveraging audio. And so the cool thing is, this is one of the things I talk about when you get the equipment is, hey, get the equipment to do good audio. And then that's going to help you when you're doing interviews, when you're creating this extra bonus content like Gary V, if you do an audio book, or even if you don't do an audio book, it's still going to have all these benefits to be leveraging the medium of audio. I love that. That's all really great stuff. Now let's talk about distribution. Distribution, what are the channels? I mean, Audible is the main place. Are there other places? Should we just publish on Audible? Should we publish, try and publish everywhere? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, great question about distribution. And Audible is going to be the biggest distributor out there of audiobooks. And it really Amazon and Audible is owned by Amazon, but they are technically kind of their separate marketplaces. You can you know purchase by going to Amazon or Audible. Yeah. One thing to note is to get distribution on Amazon, Audible, and other places, you don't actually go directly to Audible or Amazon. You go to a distributor like acx.com, Audiobooks Creation Exchange, or I really like findawayvoices.com. And a thing to note, depending on what country you live in, Audible or ACX is the US, UK, Ireland, or Canada. And so if you're not in one of those countries, you can still get out there on Amazon and Audible, but you would go through a place like Findaway Voices. Okay, so that's the technical side of it. And then in terms of where to distribute, this is going to be partly based off of your goals. So you could do what's called either an exclusive or a non-exclusive agreement. And if you're exclusive, you're saying, I only want my audiobook to be available to Amazon, Audible, and iTunes, and that's it. You can't sell it on your own site. You can't give it away for free or do these other things. It has to be only on those sites for the price they set. And some people choose that because you do get a higher royalty percentage. You get to keep 40% of the royalties. And so that's the perk of that. I personally choose to be non-exclusive because I want to be on Amazon, Audible, iTunes, 
and a bunch of other places that you can be on through Find Away Voices and library and the library system, selling it direct to consumer if you want to do that, being able to give it away for free for people to sign up for your email list or other bonuses, right? If you're using it for list building purposes. So I personally want to be as many places as possible, have as much control over the distribution. That said, you just got to decide for yourself what makes the most sense in terms of exclusive versus non-exclusive. You know what I, I noticed that you said in the non-exclusive is that you could have your own version, have your audiobook as a downloadable that they pay for right from your website that doesn't go through anybody, right? It's the just the audio files that they're getting. Is that possible? Yep, absolutely. And that means you can have, you can include this extra bonus content. Uh, I mean, you can do that some to a degree on Audible and Amazon and so on, but having extra content, you know, you're selling on your own website, immediately you capture the buyer data, which means they, they can opt in to your email list and things like that. And of course, the big uh, thing is you could sell it for the same price or even less on your own website and you're keeping you know 90 plus percent of the income uh, you might pay a PayPal fee or a Stripe fee, depending on how you process it. Uh, but you can oftentimes set up a, a checkout system where you're keeping most of uh, the money. Now, okay, why not only sell on your own website? Well, you're not necessarily going to have as many people organically discovering the book. And so that's nice about people can go onto Amazon or Audible. They can see the book. They can see the reviews. They trust that as a distributor. So I am there as well, but also I like the optionality of being able to say, Hey, you can get it on Amazon or Audible or wherever, or you could save a little bit, buy on my website, maybe get this special bonus package and you keep more income. And either way you can be in both places. I love that. I think that's an insider tip for people who have audiobooks to be able to do that. And one of the trends I'm finding, just that we're going to talk about one of our other episodes, our authors are now putting their ebook just as a PDF on their website and selling it there and not connecting it to Amazon and keeping all the money. And I think that is going to be a trend in the future. How do you see audiobooks for marketing them? What's new and where are you finding to market? And we just talked about putting them on your own website, but what should you do to market an audiobook? Are there tips to start, you know, placing it places, putting excerpts places? What are, what do you think about that? Yeah. So a lot of the audiobook sales that I've made, I've kind of been quote unquote lazy about it. I just let the sales come in okay. from the other marketing that I'm doing. So we got general book marketing principles, right? Email marketing is big, building your audience. I like sending people to Amazon and then they pick whether they want the ebook, the audiobook, or the print edition. But on that note, I also find if you're running things like Amazon ads, then Amazon ads will tend to increase sales of audiobooks, assuming you're getting sales in general. Because again, imagine the experience. If you're not, I'm going to just say like, if someone's not familiar with Amazon ads, you go onto Amazon and you do a search for a keyword. So let's say it's business books, which is something pretty generic. So they search for that and maybe they see your book pop up or they click through to it. And now they're on the Amazon page and they can choose which edition they want to buy. And when you run Amazon ads, it's not going to necessarily show you the audiobook sales uh, unless they've changed it. But if you test it, you'll go, I've seen this myself with students. Yeah, when I'm getting a lot of traffic via Amazon ads, my audiobook sales go up. When I shut off the ads, the sales go down, which is what, you would, what you'd expect whenever you're sending more traffic to a page. So Amazon ads can work. And then a really good thing that I've tested more recently are... Uh, bookbub ads. So you can run self-serve bookbub ads. And if you just do a Google search, if this is new to you, you know, search for bookbub self-serve ads and bookbub has tons of tutorials and blog articles, and they walk you through how to use their platform. So bookbub ads right now let you run ads to audiobooks. Specifically, you can use the Chirp platform, which is available through Findaway Voices. So if you have your audiobook distributed through Findaway Voices, you have Chirp as one of the platforms, you can now run discounts on audiobooks, you know, limited time discounts. And so I did this, I put the books on Findaway Voices, ran a Chirp discount, and then ran ads from BookBub. And the whole point of all this, you're getting lost in any of this. Once again, you can Google it. The big takeaway here is that the ads cost only about 20% as much as promoting eBooks. And they were, if not profitable, about break even on like, I think a 99 cent audiobook. So I was impressed. This is again, like even breaking even if your goal is to get exposure, setting up ads that take maybe five to 10 minutes to set up an ad and let it run. And then it's just, you know, generating sales in the background. 
something that will be a, a little more effort, a bigger payoff for, in terms of the quality of quality in the sense that people who are more likely to be a big fan and really like your work would be going on podcasts. Now, podcasts are a fantastic way to promote yourself as an author and build your audience. The other thing about this, though, is what do podcast listeners like? They like consuming audio. So if you're going on a podcast and then you have an offer for your audiobook or you mentioning your audiobook or a free download for your audiobook to opt in, that's something else. And I heard this from Thomas Umstead, who is great in terms of the world of podcasting. And he mentions running sponsored advertisements on podcasts. Okay. So again, now you're advertising and you're promoting your audiobook on people's podcasts that accept sponsorships. So those are a few things, basically ads to your book, ads via podcasting, and then all the other things that you're doing to promote a book. Just make sure you to mention that your audiobook is available or sending them to a place where they can pick which edition of the book they want to get. Wow, that was a lot of great content. So you can re-listen to this again and take notes and write all that down because that was really great information. I was writing notes as he was saying it and I can listen to it again myself. All right, so we've got the marketing part down and the voice part down. Where do you see the audiobooks kind of moving in the future? Do you think it's going to continue to grow or do you think it's going to flatline? I see it as continuing to grow because audiobooks have always been around, I mean, not always, but like, you know, they've been around for a while, right? Back in CD form, back in tape form, right? So audio isn't new. What's happening is the trend is growing and growing as technology reaches a point where it's easier to just have, you know, a smartphone with an, you know, the Audible app or whatever it is that you can just go in and play. I'm looking at the growth of podcasts, I'm looking at the growth of audio. So it's continuing to grow. Then I go, are people getting more busy or less busy these days? Well, they tend to be getting more busy, more occupied, more things going on, which means the ability to consume content while doing something else is probably going to grow. So that's the ability to wash the dishes and listen to audio, exercise, listen to audio, drive in the car somewhere and listen to audio. And so if people have less time to sit down, stop everything else and read a book, then audio is going to likely continue to grow. So will it can keep growing at the rate that it's growing? Will the rate slow down? I might slow down, but in terms of the overall number of people listening to audio and consuming audiobooks, that is going up consistently. So I definitely see that as growing. A side note, there is more technology that's coming out like AI for artificial voices. And that can sound like, you know, famous people or whatever. So I think that's going to be cool. I think it's going to make it more accessible. One thing to note though, is AI does not, is not accepted. You can't have a computer voice narrate your book and have that as an audiobook on Audible or Amazon or someplace like that. It has to be a human voice. I don't think that's changing anytime in the near future. So if you do want to create an audiobook and have it out there on Amazon, Audible, iTunes, and beyond, it does need to be a human voice. That's good because AI is everywhere. So you're wondering when that when it's going to click in to be acceptable to do that because I think it's going to keep getting better and better the AI voices where you just have it do it. But I don't know how they'll get the inflection and the feeling and the emotion. And I'm on board with you about having the author's voice if you can because they really have feeling and they get to know you personally. They feel like they know you at the end of the day and have a relationship with you. So where do you think like pricing? I want to back up a little bit that we didn't talk about pricing of books. And a lot of people think they have control over the price once they publish it. Yeah. So for audiobooks, if you're going to a place like ACX going on, Amazon, Audible, iTunes, there's a pretty set pricing that they have. In fact, they... A lot of times you can't even choose the pricing for the audiobook because what they've done is they said, if it's this length, then here's what the price is going to be, right? Now, if you go elsewhere, you might be able to set the price. Obviously, if you sell on your own website, you can set the price. I'll say that it's kind of a pro and con in the sense that I'm all for being in control of as much as possible. When it's your book and you want to set the pricing, maybe you want it lower, maybe you want it a lot higher. The thing is, there is an expectation that's set, let's say if you're shopping on Audible, they've kind of trained people to expect if it's this length of book, here's about what the price is going to be. And the nice thing about that is it's usually a higher price for the audiobook, and people are typically willing to pay that higher price for an audiobook edition. It does have that higher perceived value 
And usually it does take obviously more production time to produce the audiobook. So that's something to understand. Like a lot of times you're just going to go with the standard pricing. That said, if you go to a place like Findaway Voices, you do have more control over the pricing. And if you're selling it on your own, obviously you can decide, hey, do I want maybe this a real low price or a special promotion because I just want to get a high volume? Or maybe do I want a much higher price because I want a high perceived value and I'm just looking for, you know, a, to try to curate and get a very select clientele for the audiobook, in which case, again, that would be a decision that you have to make in terms of where you're distributing and what kind of pricing you want to set. Yep. All right. So we kind of talked about the future of audiobooks. Do you have any vision about the future of publishing in general? Yeah. So the trend in this is the way it's been going for years is that things will become easier and easier, right? It's now easier to produce an audiobook, whether you're hiring a narrator or doing it yourself. The technology has evolved. The options have opened up. There will be more things now, more doors are opening for promoting audiobooks. Platforms that weren't there even just a few years ago are now there to promote your audiobooks. Advertising platforms are opening up, which in one sense means it's now much more pay to play. So for those who can't or don't want to do paid advertising, it's going to be not impossible by any means, but a little more challenging, or at least you're going to need to go somewhere to build up an audience and drive a lot of traffic. So unlike the, let's say, somewhat earlier days of Amazon, where you could get a lot more organic reach nowadays, you could still do it, but you really got to get that ball rolling with paid advertising. So on one hand, you have things that will become easier. There's going to be more tools, more accessibility. What comes with that? That means a lot more people get into the marketplace. And we've seen this even five years ago or so, like just the marketplace can get flooded and we'll go through kind of these ups and downs, right? It can get flooded with some less quality books, then kind of get these crackdowns on that and more, you know, rules about the quality of the content that, you know, Amazon in particular puts in. And what I look at it like is it's all the more reason why it's important to make yourself stand out. Okay. If there are hundreds of thousands or, you know, million plus books being published, you know, every year, how are you going to stand out? So this is why you want to be not just a follower, but an innovator, a trailblazer. And that could be by going more niche, you know, niching it down, having unique marketing methods, having a unique marketing message. So you're not just, oh, it's just another XYZ book, right? So there's the pros and cons. There's the double-edged sword with everything. It's more accessible. It'll be easier in that ease of entry means you're going to have more competition and you want to be able to find a way to set yourself apart. I'll say this, you know, tying back to audiobooks as a side note is that because it's a little more challenging to produce audiobooks, I like that. I'm like, not as many people are going to be doing it, although it is getting easier and easier. So I like getting into a market like, like this because you have the big demand without as much competition. So future of publishing, things will get easier. You'll have a lot more tools. And then you go, that means you need to find a way to make yourself stand out. I agree 100% on all of that. Thanks, Derek. Really appreciate it. you've just given us a wealth of information. Really appreciate you. Yeah, thank you so much, Melanie. If you want to write a book and become a best-selling author, you're in the right place. At Elite Online Publishing, we can help you create, publish, and market your book so that it becomes a number one bestseller. We work with a limited number of authors to ensure that they receive the best possible service. So if you want to learn how to write and publish a book that will empower you to smartly grow your brand, business, and credibility, apply today. We look forward to working with you.